morning, it's Friday. And I know that just in itself has a sweet ring to it, and many of you greatly appreciate that idea. Uh, for those of you retired, you're probably not really sure if it's Monday or Friday or Wednesday afternoon. Uh, just kidding, but you understand the difference between uh, work schedules and retirement schedules. And so for those of you that are working, it's Friday, the end of your week, and uh, you can look forward to maybe some downtime this evening and the weekend. And then we, of course, look forward to seeing you one way or another on Sunday morning. Today is December 4th. Uh, the topic in our daily reading for Advent is the peace of wholeness. And there's a lot of things today that uh, we refer to as being whole or uh, lacking. And so with that in mind, keep in, in the, the back of your mind as we go through this, the idea of peace and where peace comes from and the fulfillment of peace in our life. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 14, verse 27 this morning. It's our daily verse for uh, December the 4th. And in this passage, Jesus is communicating to his disciples, the followers of Christ, and be reminded of uh, the turmoil of life in the first century. Uh, the Jewish people and the followers of God were under great distress and persecution from Rome, and just life in general were not easy in that time. And so when Jesus says this, he's giving to them something very significant. And of course, they were looking for the kingdom of God to be established and rule over Rome. Uh, and Jesus said, Behold, the kingdom of God is in your presence. And it was the rule and reign of Jesus in their life. And after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, we understand that the coming of the Holy Spirit inside of us, the dwelling, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, was the kingdom of God in our life at this very moment. And so when Jesus says this peace, it's the inner peace that we have despite what's going on all around us. I want to read the verse and then take you to uh, the Blue Letter Bible dictionary definition because there's a lot of different types of peace that are referred to in the Bible. But here in John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you. Here's one of the beginning times when Jesus predicts that he is going to be departing. We know that through the death, burial, resurrection, uh, Jesus' death and resurrection, he departed this earth. But he's predicting this in a way that the disciples will begin to understand. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The word that he uses for peace in this passage, uh, and I'll just read the direct definition, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot. So there's a couple different aspects to this type of peace that is referred to in John chapter 14. First of all, the tranquil state of your soul because of salvation. Uh, the fact that you are a follower of Jesus and salvation has uh, encompassed you. The calling of salvation as we referred to on Wednesday from Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, you and I are equipped with and provided with salvation in Christ, which automatically means there is a degree of peace that comes with that. But then it goes a step further, fearing nothing from God. Uh, we know that salvation and peace with God uh, provides us with eternal security and eternal peace with God so that there's no fear of judgment uh, as Paul said to the church at uh, Rome, he said, there's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And then it goes on one step further, meaning we're content with our earthly lot. Uh, boy, life deals us some bad cards at some times. But 
even with that, we know that we can be content with our earthly lot. And so let me go back to the verse for today. Jesus said this first, I'm leaving peace with you. So his prediction of departing earth, and he said, I'm going to leave with you peace. Um, that peace comes with the Holy Spirit. Be reminded that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit didn't happen until after Christ departed. Uh, Acts chapter 2, we know that the beginning of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, began after that time frame. So Jesus is predicting that, that it's coming, Acts 2. And then he says, my peace I give to you. Uh, this is not uh, worldly peace. Uh, this is the peace of God. My peace I give to you, Jesus said. But he follows that up with, I do not give to you as the world gives. You know, the world is looking for peace in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we talk about peace treaties where there are countries that are at war and they sign a treaty and they're no longer fighting. Uh, we talk about peace in the home, uh, marital conflict or conflict between siblings or maybe parent-child conflict and that kind of peace. Uh, we talk about inner peace, where sometimes our mind, emotions, and will, the heart of man is at conflict with itself uh, because of guilt or past or regrets. But Jesus is saying, look, I'm giving you peace, and it's my peace, and it will rule over all of these other issues. And he said it's not comparable to what the world is trying to offer uh, you know, sometimes people even today are trying to find peace with themselves or peace with others uh, through some type of physical or substance abuse. And Jesus is saying that's not the answer either. And so as we look forward to Christmas and we study the advent of the coming or the expectation of the birth of Christ. And for us, it's now the future aspect of the coming of the Lord uh, with the rapture of the church. Uh, we can have peace. And so I want to encourage you to pursue peace in the right way. Pursue peace through Jesus. And many of those that are around you today are looking for peace, but they're looking in all the wrong places. And as we read uh, from the Ephesians passage on Wednesday, uh, December 2nd, if you want to go back and look at that, uh, we know that Paul said, I'm praying for you to have peace through the enlightenment of your heart. And we know that Jesus is the light and his word is light. And so there is the direction of peace and hope in your life. And so God bless you today. Enjoy your weekend. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday.